I had a deal that I made an offer on, and it's uh, it's about a couple hours away, and the lady actually just bought it back in October, so she had fresh video and and drone, and it's a pretty house. Oh wow, so, nice. Yeah, and the thing is, she just needs cash to. There's no mortgage on the property. Uh, she was wanting 125 cash. The ARV is about 160 on the conservative side. Mm. And <clears throat> the only thing she was wanting is $10,000 to get moving. So I didn't know that at the beginning uh, when we was going through the rapport building. But basically, it looks like I can buy the house with 10 grand and just subject to, which I can I assume I would. I don't think I want to wholesale. I think there's more money to be made on it being a, a lease to own type deal. Yeah. Cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's great. So you're just going to negotiate 10 grand down, lowest price you can get, and then whatever the lowest monthly payment you can get. Because you said she owns it free and clear, right? Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's a good good opportunity to get some good cash flow. But she wasn't real hung up on getting a monthly payment. It seems like that wasn't really a concern so so would you I, I checked out the rent i could probably get 1200 conservatively should mm -hmm. i should i nicely offer her 10 and split the rent it's like 600 for me and 600 for her or should maybe negotiate on the scale a little bit maybe 400 for her we could get 10,000 or 8,000 be half rent i just I mean, I know that's all negotiation, but I just wanted to see what you guys thought when you run into a deal that's uh, there's no mortgage on it, and basically someone just needs yeah, to cap I, down on another house. I would just use that. I would just use that owner finance closing call script and negotiate the lowest monthly payment you can. Just don't forget you're you're the one that's going to be paying tax and insurance, so factor that into right. your cash flow. Oh, yep, exactly. Um, you know what, what's it going to take to make it worth your while? To, to, to do this you know what I mean especially if you're coming out of pocket 10 grand right now you got to turn around and what'd you say the ARV was um it's it's a 160 okay but I think so you might be able to put it out at 179.9 right on lease option and maybe get 15 to 20 down so you get your 10 back out plus a little more plus good cash flow that's what I was thinking too I just wanted to have hear it from you guys if that's a yeah now like, what'd you say your purchase price was 125 though yeah so if you can buy it on terms then just uh turn around and list it and sell it retail that might be even better uh and i just i know jeff was probably thinking the same thing because look you got a what's that thirty five thousand dollar spread and if you only get 15 down uh, am i doing that math right it's actually 35 plus the 10 you give her that's 45 spread and you turn around and you get 15 down you got 30 grand sitting in that thing that you can't get a hold of you see what right. i'm talking about yep if, plus you got to put the 10 out you know so right if you're going to be in the thing long term the bottom line is you got to be able to get more from your buyer than you're giving your seller yeah right yeah he he would be but he's only gonna maybe get 20 grand from his buyer and then he's still got you know he only gets 10 profit on the front end instead of 30 if you would just sell at retail maybe cash is king that's rule number one that, mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. uh, if i if the 10 didn't matter to me and no uh, it does matter to you okay don't I mean, bury cash in real estate okay <laughs> um but there'd be more at the end <clears throat> yeah more but cash flow uh, i mean just don't don't break that rule of burying a bunch of cash in real estate. Now, again, if you put 10 into it and you get 20 out of it from your buyer, then you still don't have any cash in it. Right. So that's one thing. What I don't like seeing people do is they'll go put 20% down on a house and then just stick a renter in there. And I know that's not what we're talking about here, but they'll leave right. 50 grand of cash sitting in a house. Right. You see what I mean? Okay. And then pretty soon you're going to run out of cash and then you're going to be hating life. Right. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I think we talked about that before, didn't we? Was that yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, well, at some point we talked. I do it in yeah. actually. See, I even on the 
picks and flips I do, I had to throw 15, 20% into it right away. And I don't see it for another four months. So. So that's short term enough that maybe that's okay, but I don't know. There's better ways to do it in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Look at it. The extra you know, strategy like, would be that I I'm trying to list it and just get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you can buy it with seller financing, you have multiple exit strategies at your disposal then. Okay. Real good. Yeah. So it's not a matter of, if you're going to win or lose, it's a matter of which way you're going to win first. Exactly. That's, that's how we do deals. And if, and if the deal is not like that, we just don't do the deal. That's right. But I figured that this one's a deal and just, and it was a little too wide open, I guess, to how to how do, do you it. Mean? Um, there's multiple, you know, when someone doesn't have a mortgage on it, they, they really don't need the monthly payment. They really need the, the down payment for their other house. They, they're moving two or three hours away. And, and they so, only need 10 grand cash yep. from you? Yep. I mean, it sounds like you got a good deal. What town is this in? It's, um, it's right across the border. Uh, it's in Scotts, Scottsville, Kentucky. Oh, okay. It's about 45 minutes to an hour north of Nashville. Yeah. People live out there? People like to live out there, want to live out there? Or is it just the boondocks? Um, it is a town of two to 3,000. Bowling Green is close. So there's some manufacturing jobs there. All right. So. Yeah, sounds good to me. What do you think, Jeff? Just... Yeah, don't bury money in real estate. That's the bottom line. Yeah. However you look at these things. At some point, this real estate, when you when you play real estate like that, it's a game of musical chairs. And mm -hmm. the only way to win at musical chairs is just not to play the game. Because you will get eliminated at some point. And you don't want to be the guy standing there who's put out 10000 and there's nothing coming in. You know, if you get right. caught on a downturn on a deal like that. And that's where the guys that, and we talk to people like that all the time. We always, people coming into the pipeline, a lot of these guys were big shots in the 80s, 90s, 2010, you know, up to 2008, and they filed bankruptcy because they had too much into too many, too much cash into too many deals. And there was no, you know, musical chairs was over at that point. They couldn't do anything. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I, I got caught, um, had six speculative new builds in a subdivision and I had to rent them out. And then once I rented them out, the people destroyed them and, right. and the rest was history. Like you're saying. So, yeah. yeah, you just, uh, and you know, it's, it could happen again. And the only way to, to beat that is just to, you know, aim small, miss small. Don't put much money into a deal. Make sure you can get more than that out and, and then do it again after you've completed one. Okay. Cause you know, some people go wide instead of deep. And they'll pick up a bunch of these things and like, oh, I got a hundred thousand to spend. So I'll do go 10 of these deals you just described. Well, it'll take a lot longer to sell 10 than it will take to buy 10. And uh, exactly right. You know, you know, the fit hits the sham and someone's staying after school for detention and you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. So just get in and out and fashion can and go to the next one. Yep. <laughs>